YouTube, it's Thay, and for today's video, I'm gonna kick off a new series called Toyota TSB Tuesdays. <laughs> and uh, that is because normally when I start my day, I like to get a cup of coffee, open up my computer to TIS, and just read the latest technical service bulletins and just see what's going on in the Toyota world. And it wasn't until very recently that TSBs or technical service bulletins were actually made public so people could actually search for them. However, still, if something goes wrong with someone's car, the first thing that they're not necessarily gonna do, like it doesn't it doesn't occur to you, I mean, I guess I shouldn't say what, what does or does not, but like for most of my customers, it does not occur to them to go searching for technical service bulletins to see what applies to their car. They normally sort of panic and call me and stress out how much this repair is gonna cost. So I, I don't know, I think education is really the solution to a lot of these you know minor problems that any manufacturer, not just Toyota, may have. Yep, this is an educational channel, so um, I want to empower y'all with education and knowledge. But I think it's really important to know what's going on with your car to stay educated and to stay current so that you know what to look for, even if this isn't happening to your car already, it's just, just, just a good thing to be aware of. So first of all, before we begin and jump into the first ever Toyota TSB Tuesday, um, I just wanna talk about what the heck is a TSB or technical service bulletin. A lot of people think that this is a recall and that is not the case. However, TSBs can turn into recalls if the issues are big enough, um, if they're prevalent enough, or if they're like safety related enough. Um, but basically when there is a trend noted in any manufacturer, not, not just Toyota, and also I should say this is not to dog on Toyotas at all. We know that I'm a huge Toyota fan, obviously. And if you go and look up technical service bulletins for any manufacturer, you will see that Toyota is doing just fine. But you know, when there are issues detected in vehicles that tends to come up quite a bit, like over and over again, there's a pattern happening, then the manufacturer will issue a technical service bulletin to their technicians to say, hey, look out for this. It's happening on these specific makes and models. And here is the exact procedure that we recommend in order to fix it, because this is such a common problem. Um, that can, escalate to being covered under warranty, it does not necessarily mean that that is going to be a repair covered under warranty. So that's why I think it's so important to just know, first of all, like, is this something that may happen to your car and what can you do about it? And how can you arm yourself with the best information possible to know, can this be done for free? Can this be done under warranty or extended warranty or even an extended campaign if your vehicle is out of warranty? And what's the proper way to repair it? Like, what should you expect from that repair? So. Without further ado, let's jump into our first one. All right, so for today's TSB, we're gonna talk about TSB 0079-21, and that is for 2019 and 2020 forerunners with an inside CV joint boot leak. <laughs> now, just because it's only for 2019 and 2020 does not mean that it does not affect the 2021 models. It may or it may not. They may have noticed this early enough that they've got a superseded part number, a better part on the 2021 models, or the 2021 models just do not have high enough mileage on them for this to have started and have the technicians notice and make a point about that. So why is this important to know about this? Because just a leaking boot, like that's not a big deal. Well, first of all, if grease can get out, that means other things can get in. And you don't want to lose a bunch of grease in your CV joint because that keeps your CV joint healthy. And I will say that I have seen very, very many um, CV assemblies replaced prematurely before there's any real noise or any real danger of anything happening, like the CV joint actually like, seizing and actually being a safety concern. You know, people will recommend that you replace these just because the boot is split. So having a leaking boot actually can potentially set you up to spend money that you don't need to spend. Also, one thing I noticed in this TSB is that this TSB only applies if there's no other damage to the boot at all. So so you want to get in and get this done before anything else happens, before you run over some road debris and maybe slice the boot open or anything else happens that causes a little nick in there because as soon as there's any other damage to the boot, you are not going to be able to get this done for free. So if you have a 2019 or 2020 or maybe even 2021 Toyota 4Runner, um, definitely get underneath the vehicle, check this out and see what your CV joint boots look like, especially the inboard ones that apply to this TSB. Okay, so now that we're familiar with the TSV and what it means, what is this repair gonna look like? Well, looking through the steps, we're seeing that the technician is gonna remove that entire CV joint, actually disassemble that inner CV joint, and replace it with a new boot kit and put everything back together. 
Now, why is it important to even know what's going to happen here? Well, sometimes you can, you know, sort of do a risk benefit assessment. Maybe it's not worth it to you to have someone go in there and actually get their hands on disassembling this thing. You know, sometimes it's better to leave things alone. Sometimes having human hands in there messing with stuff can do more harm than good. So you know, maybe you don't trust your dealership. I don't know, I'm not saying that you shouldn't, but you never know. A lot of people out there call themselves technicians and uh, you know, I would never bring my car to them. So, you know, just definitely do the assessment for yourself and see like, is this something that I wanna have done professionally by the dealership or will I just sort of wait and see or really just be aware that this is an issue and it's gonna leak a little bit. I'm not gonna let anyone erroneously sell me an axle that I don't need. So, um, you know, just, just good to know. And last but not least, we've got steps Seven is test drive the vehicle to confirm that the drive shaft is no longer leaking. All right, if this is happening to vehicles with 25,000 miles or less, um, is the technician gonna necessarily drive that 5,000, 10,000, 25,000 miles? Like double check? No. Um, you know, they might drive it around, but you may have to go through a couple oil changes and you may have to be the one to sort of keep an eye on it or remind them next time that you go in for your service, your 5K or 10K toy to care service and just say, hey, remember you did the service? Can you just check and make sure that this is still not leaking? So ah, it's good to be empowered and like sort of take control over your ride and over your maintenance because at the end of the day, no one is gonna be the best advocate for your ride as you will be, you know, and the squeaky will get to grease. So if you go into the dealership and they're used to knowing like, oh my gosh, this person's really picky about her car, that's not necessarily a bad thing, you know? Some technicians are afraid of picky customers. Might be because they got something to hide or, you know, they just, maybe they're not the best technicians out there. Uh, it, it should not be a problem to be a majorly picky customer or, you know, really care about your car and care about the longevity of it, so. And for informational purposes, I will show you where you can locate the inboard front CV joint um, on this Volkswagen Rabbit, which I know is not a Toyota. However, I looked around in every single Toyota that I've got around here right now is two wheel drive or rear wheel drive. <laughs> so anyways, you're gonna go ahead and get in the front of the vehicle and your CV joint is attached to the wheel and goes from the wheel to the transmission. So the outboard is gonna be the boot that's closest to the wheel and the inboard is gonna be the one that is closest to the transmission. So let me show you. Okay, so here we have the front wheel and here we have the transaxle. So here you can see the outboard and the inboard CV joint boot. And that's the one that you're gonna wanna look at on your forerunner which is gonna look pretty similar to that, but obviously uh, just different because it's not a Volkswagen. So um, I hope this was helpful. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, um, awesome. Leave me a thumbs up, comment. Let me know that you enjoyed this first ever edition of Toyota TSB Tuesdays. And um, maybe I'll do another one in the future. All right, thanks for watching. Bye. Okay.